Okay, guys. So this next one, you're going to have to watch really careful. All right. There's a lot of different concepts I've taught you this year that you're going to have to use to solve this problem. So 12.2 honors. We're going to find the volume of the cylinder. Now we've done that before. Okay. So how is the volume of a cylinder related to the volume of a prism? Okay, now remember, anytime we find the volume of any figure, okay, if it's a rectangular prism, the name of the prism is the base. In other words, the shape of the base would be the rectangle. A triangular prism, the base would be a triangle. In this case, we are doing a cylinder, so the base is a circle. Now remember, the volume equals base times height. Now the base is capitalized because we're always going to have to go through and substitute in whatever formula we need depending on the shape of the base. In this case, the shape of the base is a circle from my crude drawing. Okay, So the, we know the area of a circle is pi multiplied by radius squared. In other words, I have to substitute pi multiplied by radius squared in for the base, and we're still going to multiply it by the height. Now, we've done this before, but here's the tough part. They went through and they gave you the circumference of the base. So we actually have to find that radius first before we can go through and figure out the area of this base and multiply it by the height. So we have to know a few things. First of all, we have to ask ourselves, how do we find the circumference? So the formula for a circumference is pi multiplied by diameter. But what we actually need to do is find the diameter because we know that the radius is half of the diameter. So first I'm going to find the diameter. How do I do that? I'm going to isolate the variable and I'm going to balance the equation. In other words, I'm going to divide by pi on both sides. This is gone. So in other words, to find the diameter, it equals circumference divided by pi. So if we substitute in what we have, in other words, the diameter would equal 3 pi, because we know that the circumference is 3. However, I need half of that. So we need to find the radius. In other words, I'm going to take 3 multiplied by pi and divide it by 2. Now I put the 2 up here because if we have um, a fraction in here, we want to make everything a fraction. That was one of the things I taught you guys, so I'm going to put that over 1. Then we go, we don't divide fractions. What do we do? We multiply by the reciprocal. So in other words, radius equals 3 divided by pi multiplied by 1 half. In other words, our radius equals 3 over pi or 2 pi. There we go. Sorry. 2 pi. Because 2 multiplied by pi. So now we have our radius. This is our radius. That allows us to plug it into this right here and be able to figure out what the volume is. Okay, now this is going to get a little bit complicated, so you've got to watch this careful. So I'm going to draw a line right here. Let me make sure I'm all on camera. I am. I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit more. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. And I already did the calculations on this. So in other words, now we're going to find the volume. The volume right here equals pi times radius squared multiplied by the height. So I'm going to substitute that in real quick. Pi multiplied by, and here it is, 3 over 2 pi. And I put parentheses around this because we need to square it, right? And then we are going to multiply that by the height, which is 5. Now I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to square everything that's in these parentheses, and I'm going to put these into fractions since I have a fraction here. In other words, my volume equals pi over 1 multiplied by 3 squared is 9 over 2 squared is 4 over pi squared. Now remember, pi squared is simply pi multiplied by pi. And then this is 5 over 1. 
Now I'm going to do one more step so you can see where the cross canceling comes in. Okay, guys? So in other words, volume equals, and we're still doing the pi over 1, and then we're going to multiply that by 9 and 4. So like I said, pi squared is actually pi multiplied by pi. So I'm going to put two pi's here, multiplied by 5 over 1. The reason I did this is because if you'll see, I cancel the pi's. I cross cancel the pi's. We can do that. We can do it with variables. We can do it with symbols. We can go through and do it with numbers, of course. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these straight across. So in other words, my volume equals 45 over, now this, at this point we're going to change this pi into 3.14. Now that we've done all the cross canceling, we can. When I multiply this by 3.14, I get 12.56. 12 and 56 hundredths. Now, the other thing I taught you, every fraction is a division problem. Now with this one, this becomes a very, very long number. It's not repeating or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round my, near, my number, my answer, to the nearest hundredth. Okay, when I do that, that means I have to put that this is approximately, remember my squiggly equal sign is approximately 3 point or 3 and 58 hundredths. And remember this was meters, you see the meters right here, right? Meters, and then because this is volume, it is cubed. And that becomes my answer, guys. Like I said, a lot of work. So I'm going to move out of the way for a second, let you look at this. If you need to, pause this right now so that you can write all this information down. And if there's anything you don't understand, you let me know, and we will go through and rework this problem again. All right, guys? All right. Good luck.